This is the 103rd episode of the Zero Days to Expiration podcast. And in this episode, we're going to learn what the Old Testament has to say about volatile markets and how we can use the models it describes to identify real market opportunities. I ain't kidding. The Old Testament provides insight to the nature of markets and how they behave. Seriously. Now, I don't think that there's any doubt that the Bible has at least some historical references embedded in its prose. And from that, we can garner words from important biblical figures on how markets work through conceptual models. I, 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 look, I'm totally serious about this. <laughs> in, a, in fact, in a past episode, I said that markets have long-term memory. Whoever thought that markets would have long-term memory, but I've shown how they actually do. And that memory influences market behavior in the present by creating a kind of roughness or landscape that I call market structure. Now, I use volume profile to discover this topological or topographical mapping of this landscape. And today, I'm going to describe the characteristic behaviors that we see in market movements, this sort of trending and consolidation and the erratic movements. I mean, these are all and they're all fractals. They happen in small times as well as larger times. And we can find them in virtually all spans of time. And also outside the specific time frame, something called market time, which is different from the normal time that we experience. These are like fractal patterns of market movements that can only be seen if we were to compress or expand the regular metronome of time. Now, that discussion is... I think for another podcast, this whole idea of expansion and compression of time, and it's very interesting. But what does this Old Testament have to do with what I'm talking about now, these market moves, these, this behavior of how markets move? What I'm speaking of specifically is something called the Joseph and Noah effect. This idea was presented first by Benoit Mandelbrot in his book, Misbehavior of Markets, A Fractal View of Financial Turbulence. I recommend that book very highly. I'm going to read a specific chapter for you, and then we'll discuss how we can add this model to our understanding of markets and how to profit from that understanding. So hang on to the end. The following is from Benoit Mendelbrot's book, Misbehavior of Markets, A Fractal View of Financial Turbulence. There's a chapter 10 in a subsection, two dual forms of wild variability to describe the markets. And so Middlebrot says, in science, all important ideas need names and stories to fix them into memory. It occurred to me that the market's first wild trait, abrupt change or discontinuity, is prefigured in the Bible tale of Noah. As Genesis relates, in Noah's 600th year, God ordered the great flood to purify a wicked world. Then, were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Noah survived, of course. He prepared against the coming flood by building a ship strong enough to withstand it. The flood came and went, catastrophic but transient. Market crashes are like that. The 29.2% collapse of October 19, 1987, arrived without warning or convincing reason, and at the time, it seemed like the end of the financial world. Smaller squalls strike more often, with more localized effect. In fact, a hierarchy of turbulence, a pattern that scales up and down with time, governs this bad financial weather. At times, even a great bank or a brokerage house can seem like a little boat in a big storm. So this next part from the book is about Joseph. Mandelbrot said, The market's second wild trait, almost cycles, is prefigured in the story of Joseph. So Pharaoh dreamed that seven fat cattle were feeding in the meadow when seven lean kine rose out of the Nile and ate them. Kine are also a type of cattle, by the way, or bovine. Likewise, seven straggly ears of corn consumed seven plump ears. Joseph, a Hebrew slave, called the dreams prophetic. Seven years of famine would follow seven years of prosperity. He advised Pharaoh to stockpile grain for the bad times to come. And when all passed as prophesied, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy corn. 
because that the famine was so sore in all lands. Given the profits he and Pharaoh must have made, one might call Joseph the first international arbitrageur. That pattern, familiar from Hearst work on the Nile, also appears in markets. A big 3% change in IBM stock one day might precede a 2% jump the other day. Then a 1.5% change, then a 3.5% move, as if the first big jumps were continuing to echo down the succeeding days of trading. Of course, this is not a regular or predictable pattern, but the appearance of one is strong. Behind it is the influence and long-range dependence in an otherwise random process, or put it another way, a long-term memory through which the past continues to influence the random fluctuations of the present. So we have two distinct types of market turbulence in these volatile markets. The abrupt change or discontinuity interspersed with almost cycles or short trends of varying length and magnitude. Bear market rallies come to mind here. And Randall Mandelbrot says these two forms of wild behavior are part of a single reality, and they mix together like two primary colors. And he imagines one being red and the other one being blue, creating an infinite palette of purples and violets. Now, which makes me think my video thumbnails should probably capture that somehow. So maybe I'll do that while we have these volatile bear markets. <laughs> Mandelbrot says his research shows that different markets can be characterized by distinct hues of this turbulence, and it can be measured in patterns that can be identified. So he developed a kind of statistical tool set to do just that. So the two primary ways he categorizes markets are by this factor he calls alpha, which is a kind of volatility and liquidity measure, where a low alpha is prone to wild market swings and a high alpha is more like the classic coin toss market. Uh, or one that follows a random walk or maybe brownie in motion or something. The other category uses the Hurst coefficient for long range dependence. And that's using the letter H, the H factor. So a neutral H value shows little dependence upon previous prices. A higher H value shows strong dependence, and a lower one shows anti-dependence, much like the correlation coefficient. Mandelbrot attempts to separate these two effects with a statistical test he calls rescaled range analysis, or R slash S. Now, it's important to note that no assumptions in this test are made about the organization of the data, so he doesn't try to fit it in any kind of normal di distribution, so there's no variance or mean or anything like that. But basically, it comes down to this. The Joseph effect depends on the precise order of events to show that long-term market memory, while the Noah effect depends on the relative size of events. If you were to measure such events, then reshuffle the data like a deck of cards. With the cards out of sequence now, the dependency of the data and the Joseph effect would get scrambled right out of existence. Only the face value is present now, or what is now the NOAA effect, the magnitude of these events. So to complete the test, you just compare the data before the shuffling and then after. And if there is a difference, then there must have been some kind of strong Joseph effect present prior to the shuffling. So the sequence was really important. So using this method, you can find this so-called long memory in the markets. And there have been several published studies that have proven that market memory exists using this method. And I'll provide resources in the show notes. But we don't need these scientific tests to actually use the existence of, or see the existence of market memory. And that's because there are less scientific ways or less statistical ways to see and use market memory in the mapping of volume over spans of time, namely using volume profiling. The profile exposes the memory in the form of nodes and anti-nodes of accumulated volume at various levels. And with simple cartographical techniques, or my own version of those, we can literally identify the boundaries of market memory by drawing lines at various levels in the market price. So it's one thing to prove that memory exists, but it's quite another thing to draw it on a chart and then use it to plan out your trading scenarios to see markets dance along this topographical mapping. If you want to see it, 
or learn how to create the mapping yourself, then go to my YouTube channel every Monday morning where I do what I call a clean slate market structure analysis using volume profile where I expose market memory. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for listening and we'll see you next time. The next zero days to expiration podcast.